Well, it's good to see all of you on this uh, Sabbath day, a beautiful day that we have. And uh, today I want to talk about a subject that's not that complicated, not that deep, but uh, it's one that I haven't heard mentioned in uh, some time. I want to talk about the third commandment. And I want to show you some, something about the third commandment that perhaps you haven't heard before. It means a little more than on the surface it looks like. So I've, I called this the third commandment, finding a deeper understanding. Of course, we in the church believe the Ten Commandments are just as, just as much in force today as they were three to four to five thousand years ago, and uh, we we strive to keep the commandments, and in a new new way that Jesus opened them up to us. So to begin, I'd like to uh, turn to Exodus 20, verse 7. You don't have to turn there. I, just one verse I want to read. I just, I just want to read the third commandment. It says, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Now, when I was uh, growing up, uh, we were, I was from sort of a religious family, not entirely religious, but, you know, we're kind of off and on. We would attend for a while, and then we wouldn't, wouldn't, and uh, sort of a hit and miss type thing. But anyway, uh, we, we kept this commandment to the best of our, our understanding, and uh, we didn't allow in our house people swearing, use God, using God's name in swearing. And that's what most people think this commandment says, and they think it's really, some think it, it's all that it says. But I'm going to show you today that that's not exactly true. I got the idea for this sermon, uh, sermonette, uh, years ago when I heard a Jewish, uh, he was actually a talk show host, but he happens to be a, uh, one who reads, speaks, understands Hebrew, and uh, he actually teaches Hebrew at the college level. His name is uh, Dennis Springer. You've probably, some of you have heard of him, but he actually uh, reads Hebrew and understands it. And he said, the word take here says, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. He said the word take would probably be better translated carry because the word there, uh, if you're interested, it's uh, Strong's 5376. And in English, we pronounce it N-A-S-A, NASA. Uh, you know, not National Aeronautics and whatever that stands for. But <laughs> NASA. And it's, uh, it's a common word used over and over and over in the Old Testament. It's, in fact, it's, uh, it's, it's translated in a way that you could use the English word carry over 300 times. Possibly 400. I, I got tired of counting there around 300. <laughs> so, but I, I think about 400 times it's translated uh, with the idea that somebody is carrying something or transporting something. And uh, Dennis Prager, when he uh, talk, talk, talked about this, he said, you should consider something like a briefcase. When it, it says when you... When you carry a briefcase, you don't want to let it out of your side. You have important papers or whatever in there. And uh, so he says, it's always with you. And uh, it's sort of an identifying thing for you because you carry this briefcase. And he was saying, that's the way God's name is. When you claim to be God's servant or a, or a disciple of God, uh, you're taking his name on you. That's what you're doing. And that's, that's the point he wanted to make when he, he, he related this to carrying a briefcase or something of that, of that nature. 
let's turn now to 2 Corinthians 5, verse 20. And I want to read you there a, uh, a fairly familiar scripture to many of you, I know. And uh, this has to do with uh, being an ambassador for Christ. Being an ambassador, ambassador for Christ. Let's... 2 Corinthians 5, let's begin in verse 18. It says, Now all things are of God, this is Paul writing, who has reconciled us to him through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God in Christ reconcil was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and that committed to us the, the word of reconciliation. And then verse 20, which is the one I want to zero in on. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. And of course, we have a song that we sing quite often to that effect. We are ambassadors to Christ as though Christ were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. And the word uh, pleading there is, is, a better word might be appealing, not pleading. God doesn't plead for uh, necessarily he appeals to you to be reconciled to him. So we are ambassadors of Christ. We really are. N not so much in the, uh, in the uh, way that a governmental ambassador is, but in a way, we represent Christ. When people see us, see our actions, hear our words, they should understand that we represent Jesus Christ and the way of God. Actually, Paul didn't develop this, uh, this image very deeply. He just sort of listed to that one time, maybe a couple, a couple of times other, he mentioned it as well. Now how about the word in vain? It says not to carry or take the, the word, the name of God in vain. The word in vain, I didn't, I didn't really break out what the word is, but it's, it's also used quite a little bit, and it means foolishly, incorrectly or lightly or without reverence. Uh, that's what the word vain means. Also, Jesus himself uh, mentioned this in, a, in the Sermon on the Mount. I'd like to turn next to Matthew 5 uh, and uh, read just a, a, a little bit there from the Sermon what's called the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 5, and beginning in uh, verse 13. Matthew 5, verse 13 says, You, speaking of his disciples and to us, and to all those that are listening, that you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. And then I, well, I'll go ahead and read 14, but I want to mention that separately. You are the light of the world. Uh, another uh, metaphor he's giving here. One, we are the salt of the earth, and now he's saying, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Then he says, let your light shine so that before, shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. It's interesting, he says, so that 
He says, let your light shine before men that they might see your, uh, that might hear your preaching. Doesn't say that. <laughs> he says, see your good works. So they're supposed to see the way we act, the way we carry God's name, in other words, as representing God. <clears throat> So there's a lot here, <clears throat> a lot here to uh, to understand. It was kind of warm at the park, and, <laughs> and uh, it dried out my <clears throat> dried out my throat. <clears throat> Have you ever had food that has no salt? <clears throat> you know, he said. Uh, if salt has lost its savor, uh, <clears throat> how will it be? How will it season the food? Uh, I like to buy uh, organic food when I can, and uh, I buy sometimes buy uh, organic canned things. And uh, a lot of times it says no salt added, and I said, oh no. Anyway. I try to eat that without salt, and, and it just doesn't work. I need to, I need to put a little salt on it to, to make it to make it palatable. Uh, otherwise, it's like uh, Jesus said that uh, you know, it just doesn't taste right. And we should be that way to this world. You know, this is a this is a dark world we live in. If you if you watch the news, uh, you can't uh, you can't help but seeing how this world is really, really off track in so many ways. And uh, <clears throat> so we are the flavoring for the world because they can see, they should see, the way we act, the way we react, and uh, the way we don't follow the actions of this evil world. You know, we've seen, if you've probably seen on TV, all of the uh, the uh, demonstrations and so on, and uh, people getting out of hand and and actually mistreating each other. You and I are not supposed to do that. We don't need to do that. The world actually needs the flavoring that we can give them as the salt of the earth. They really do. And then Jesus says, we are the light of the world. You know, the present world is kind of a dark place, isn't it? Uh, you know, people have lost just a normal civility. And there's not a lot of love shown uh, in people today. They, they like to fight and, uh, and demonstrate and do all kinds of things that should not be done. But we shouldn't be that way. We should be a light. So now the, I would like to ask the question, how are we supposed to do this? And to whom are we supposed to relate to? First of all, I have three points that I've... When I was going over this, I noticed I, I should have added one more point. Anyway, I'll read the ones that I have. Uh, first of all, we need to treat our immediate family with a godly, in a godly way. We need to, uh, you know, whether you're a husband, wife, or, or even children, you should treat each other in the correct way, in a godly way, in a uh, in an understanding way. You know, if you're a husband, you don't need to be a tyrant. If you're a tyrant, you're not a good husband. You're a tyrant. <clears throat> so we need to understand that and, and practice that in our personal lives, in our family life. Number two, at the workplace. You know, if... Uh, <clears throat> You should be known as a hard worker, should be known as a, uh, a respectful worker. You should respect your boss, or if, you're, if you are a boss, 
uh, a leader, then you should uh, lead in the way Christ would lead. Thirdly, you need to treat those of the world with the proper respect. And, uh, you know, when you're out in, in the world and we're all, we all have opportunities to uh, be in the world, Christ said, don't take them from the world, but they are to be apart from the world. People should notice the way you do things. Uh, whether you're cantankerous and hard to get along with, or whether you're friendly and helpful, they should see that. And of course, the point that I should have added was here in the church, you know, we, we should treat each other correctly. I mean, we, we shouldn't argue with each other and bring up things that are not profitable, you know, if they, if, there's something that needs to be handled, very likely it should be handled out of church in a, in a different way. So we don't want to do the improper thing and the wrong thing here at church. So to conclude, I will tell you this. You need to remember all these things and understand that you are representatives of God's way. And if you're not living God's way, you're not a good representative of that way. You should be loving, kind, considerate. And if you carry God's name, which you do with you, then you will be those things. And so I'll put, I'll put it this way. If you follow these examples then I, I guarantee you, you will not be taking God's name in vain.